All right, everyone, we're going to shoot a video. Quiet on the set for five minutes. Quiet on the set. <laughs> Hello, I am Sam Kellagioni. I am here at our beautiful OG location, Dogfish Head Brewings and Eats downtown Rehoboth. We are getting ready to open any minute, but before we open Dogfish Brewings and Eats, I'm going to open my heart and my mind to you and answer a bunch of questions from this month's edition of Ask Dogfish. Let's do this. Josh Adams has asked the question, out with it already, what are you canning, Dogfish Head? Excellent question, and yup, it's time we go on the record and say we have bought a beautiful rotary German Cronus canning line that we are testing as I speak and starting next week we start sending out cans, beautiful 12 ounce cans of 60 minute IPA up and down the mid-Atlantic region before the holidays, also as part of our IPAs for the holidays extravaganza. And then, coming early next year, Feb 1 to be exact, we'll see 60-minute cans going coast to coast in any market that you now enjoy dogfish in. And flesh and blood, the beautiful, all-natural, true fruit infused fruit IPA based on the OG fruit IPAs we've been brewing at Dogfish for two decades. Flesh and Blood, 12 ounce coming at you in February, and soon after that, Sea Quench Ale, the beautiful session sour made with sea salt, black limes, and lime juice coming at you April 1. We're going to start with those three canned beers in 2017. Uh, we're really, really excited to finally be getting our beers into cans to you. Sean Smith asked the question with the saturation of craft beer, 4,600 craft beers out there, and the big breweries marketing beers as if they were uh, craft beers. What is the biggest challenge as a craft brewer to get your beer on premise and off premise at restaurants, at liquor stores across the country? I would say uh, because there is such a finite amount of space at liquor stores, on tap handles, at bars, um, that you, the consumer, really hold the key to getting dogfish head beer into the bars and stores that you shop at. Be loud on social media, in person. Ask for dogfish head if a place doesn't have it. In essence, a brewery deserves their spot at retail if they are maniacally um, focused on three things. They are brewing superbly world-class quality beers, consistent beers, and well-differentiated beers. You as consumers deserve to have all three of those things in every beer that you drink, and Dogfish Head is maniacally focused on delivering on all three of those aspects of great craft beer. This question comes from Matt E. Price, perhaps a long-lost relative of Mark E. Smith of the wonderful uh, English band. Uh, that's, I digress. Uh, the question is, since we have a distillery, will we be uh, at some point doing whiskeys and bourbons? And if we are, will those drinks uh, someday be interwoven with our brewing creativity in wood or whatever? And the answer to both questions is yes, yes, and heck yes. Uh, we've been doing brown aged spirits at our distillery for well over a decade, starting with our brown honey rum. We make all of our spirits 100% from scratch. Check into what's marketed as craft uh, distilled spirits from different parts of the world to see if they truly do get made from scratch. We use our world-class grain handling, QC yeast capabilities to make a beautiful natural on-premise wash for our vodkas, our gins, our rums we're doing for molasses. But yes, our whiskeys, our, bur our bourbons, whatever iteration of brown spirits from grains that will be coming from us, will be coming from us, and they will be incorporating the, the wood creativity of our beer world into our spirits world. So, Gordon Roth asks the question, Delaware is known for being pretty creative with some of our natural treats that we eat, including muskrat. There are diners and restaurants in this area who, who uh, do muskrat dinners. God bless them. The question that Gordon has is, will dogfish in our fearless brewing exploration of goodness be at some point incorporating muskrat into one of our beer recipes? Sort of, phonetically, I guess because we, we have a beer coming out that must have scrapple love in it. It's not muskrat love, it has, must have scrapple love. And that is 
beer for breakfast, and it literally is hitting our tasting room uh, this Friday uh, today, and it starts shipping actually today as well. So our winter seasonal is called Beer for Breakfast. It was invented in this very room. If you come to Brewings and Eats in downtown Rehoboth, I'm looking at the list of brew pub exclusives. Really, this is the room that all of our experimental beers are born, and then some of them grow into these bigger, stronger adult beers that do a little walkabout across the country and make their way way to to you which is the case with beer beer for breakfast we've been iterating on a breakfast stout since 1995 the original breakfast stout is dogfish head chicory stout which has been made with uh, roasted coffee and roasted chicory in this building and been distributed every year for the last 21 years. Since our breakfast stout concept turned legal drinking age this, this year, we said let's, let's kind of use this here kitchen and all of our proficiency with culinary ingredients and kind of do an everything but the kitchen sink breakfast stout. We took all these different ingredients, figured out which ones work the best in which combinations and volumes, and landed on this recipe that uh, kind of going in, in uh, spheres of the effect of the recipe. Coffee the, the cold pressed coffee is probably the most forward ingredient. Secondarily would be the applewood smoked roasted barley gives it its color, its roastiness. Third would be sort of the maple syrup, the fermentable sugars and, and sweet earthiness of that. And then there is the beautiful flavor of Scrapple, made a specially lean version of us right down the road from here from Rappus Scrapple. And that too contributes sort of a, a little subtle smoky earthiness uh, to the beer. So look for beer for breakfast, hitting the shelves in early November. There is no wrong time of the day to enjoy the day's uh, most important meal, which is breakfast. This question comes from Bailey Frazier, who's asking, when can I see dogfish beer in New Mexico? So we have mad love for New Mexico, and I think it's very safe to say our beer is headed towards New Mexico at some point in the uh, future. I'll even say near future. And also for those of you uh, that love to be Sherlock Holmesy, go to uh, the careers page at dogfish.com and you will see positions for awesome sales-oriented dogfish co-workers of the future that may reference different geographies around the country that have something to do with our future. I don't know. Check it out dogfish.com. And now it's time for our famed end part of Ask Dogfish, which is the rapid fire question roundup, where we're going to throw some quick questions at me and I'm going to do some quick answers. Here we go, rapid fire. Ah, first question, what would be my passion if it wasn't for a craft brewery? I would love to be a writer of fiction or a high school English teacher. What's next, rapid fire? Will you, will I marry you? No, today is my wife Mariah's birthday and my heart 100% belongs to Mariah Draper. Good question. Rapid fire. Who cuts my hair? Crazy question. Her name is Hyatt. She's a local barber in Lewis, Delaware. 14 bucks and awesome local gossip. Check out Hyatt. What else? Will I ever guest appear on Brooklyn Nine-Nine? Um, no, I don't think so. My good buddy Joe Latruglio is the short cop on that. He's a great guy. I've been at his wedding with the other lead guy, Andy Sandberg, Turtlenecks and Chains. Really great guys, but I don't know. I haven't been asked yet, but if they ask me, I would love to be a perp who committed the crime of loving beer too much. This has been Ask Dogfish. Thank you for your awesome questions. Keep them coming. Cheers. Mm -hmm.